Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Sports Exchange. In case you missed the Motor City Mad Mouse Show, you missed a doozy. I had former Dodgers Vice President and General Manager Fred Clare on the show, and we talked about everything that you can imagine. Let me tell you, so if you get a chance by the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel, please check it out. Mr. Clare, I'll tell you, there weren't too many subjects that we didn't talk about, so please check it out. Meanwhile, tonight, the Sports Exchange with Candy. Welcome back, Candy. Thanks, Scott. Great to be here. J.B. Ellis, welcome back. Pleasure to be here, guys. How's everybody doing? I'm doing all right. And last but not least, George Icorn. Happy All-Star break, everyone. There you go. And Joshua <laughs> Dorr, he's on. I have a feeling we're going to have a lively show with Joshua Dorr tonight. Good stuff. Don't worry, Joshua. We won't disappoint you with these topics. Mark my word. You'll be able to loosen up enough to make it worth your while to be on tonight. Anyways, let's get right to the WNBA which has agreed to a $2.2 billion rights fee with deals with ESPN, Amazon, and NBC, which will quadruple the league's revenue. The current deal is $50 million. The reported new annual deal right now is going to be $200 million per season over 11 years. That equals $2.2 billion. And you can rest assured Caitlin Clark had a lot to do with it. All of a sudden, the networks are taking the WNBA seriously. And let's go to the, the the woman that we have in here, Candy Eblin. This would have been a good one for Megan Price to be on. But, Candy, uh, we're more than happy to have you start off with this one. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that people are starting to recognize women's sports. I'm glad that they're starting to pay more attention to it. I'm glad that their increase – I mean, now that they're seeing these revenue increases – I just hope that equates to what we're paying them as well, because the amount that like Caitlin Clark is earning granted, she gets endorsements and all those other things, but the actual amount that she gets paid to play the game is very minute. Um, They're actually, I don't know if, if any of you guys know this, but they're actually then she's going to be represented. um, NASCAR team is to use Caitlin Clark themed car at Brickyard 400 this year weekend as well <laughs> so she's going to be represented at, on nascar as well as so i mean it's popular i'm happy that it's not just one player it's a couple of players that are you know sparking the wnba for those that love basketball and love women's sports that's great and i'm well, excited and happy for them well, when you think about the logistics of the deal, you're talking the current deal is fifty million dollars, and now the next one's going to be two hundred million. I mean, that's a lot. That's attributed to Caitlin Clark. It, it has a lot to do with it. It's so all these people that were jealous. They'll get out of there. I mean, the one thing I'd like to see come out of this whole thing is they get paid enough money so they don't have to go overseas and have to supplement their income, uh, aka Brittany Griner. I'll turn it over to Joe. What are your thoughts about the WNBA finally earning a contract that it can feel pretty good about? I think they made a big mistake. 11 years is a long time. You don't know what's going to happen. If the sport blows up, they're locked in. Right. 11 years. Think about how long that is. What were you doing 11 years ago, Scott? Do you remember? Was I, I, I've been in this business 44. I can tell you that much. Right. So so where were you 11 years ago? Where was the South Florida Tribune? Well, that was not in existence. Right. If you're trying to pin me down. You just did. Okay, go yeah, ahead. So, I mean, 11 years is so far. You don't know what could happen. They're leaving money on the table. The sport's growing. They they seem desperate doing an 11 year deal. Not the right move. Mm-hmm. You know, glad that they finally got some recognition. They'll be on some great networks, but not a, not a smart business decision, you, especially in the TV climate, to do an 11 year deal. Okay, let's go to the chat room, Candy. Walter Mitchell's first one. Well, does that pay the way for future expansion? You know, it definitely will. No doubt about that. They matched up, up with the NDA deal. From what I understand, I think it could be wrong. Oh, there you go. Walter agrees with Joe. All right, George, you got the final word on this one. Yeah, the NBA deal is not totally finalized yet, but I agree, JB. I mean, that is an awful long time. Um, and obviously, they're trying to seize the moment, uh, like Candy alluded to, with Caitlin Clark and An- Angel Reese and – and all these great uh, uh, WNBA players we've seen over the last 12, 24, 36 months, three years possibly going back. I mean, they've been working very hard, don't get me wrong, ever since the league was started uh, to get a contract of this magnitude, but it unfortunately has not happened so far. 
And you're right. I mean, you know, they are gambling a bit because that's an awful long time for a contract to run. But it's also a sign of how far they've come, uh, which you guys talked about earlier. You know, the, a sign of how far women's basketball and women's sports in general has come. But All Walter right. is Walter is correct. I that NBA's Board of Governors approved the league's next media rights deal, and it's finalizing. It's an eleven-year agreement as well. So the NBA and WNBA are both going for eleven-year deals, which I agree, JB, is really long in in today's day and age. And with the eleven years, let's face it, we weren't streaming eleven years ago, and how th quickly things have changed. 11 years is a long time. Okay. Well, you know, we're talking a long time. So guess what? We're going to transition to another long time subject, but not one that Joe Ellis would really particularly like. And I'll talk about the New York championship drought that the Rangers eliminated. There have been 100 combined seasons played by the Rangers, the Islanders, the Knicks, the Nets, the Yankees, the Mets, the Jets, and the Giants. <laughs> Joe, 100 years and you can't get a title in the Big Apple Metropolitan Detroit. What is wrong up there? Just bad, bad general managers, bad coaching, just, you know, teams that are trying to win, but there's better teams that have gotten lucky or done the right thing. You know, the Giants are, I don't know, can't even understand what they're doing. The Yankees have, haven't learned over the last I guess the house there, Steinbrenner and our era uh, over in Queens at city field. They would, they are trying to do the George Steinbrenner method, which didn't really work. Mm -hmm. uh, the jets of the jets. I mean, 1969 was a long time ago. And I, for what, I don't know what they did to be such a cursed franchise. So we, we can't count them for anything. You know, the nets, they, they tried, you know, they got their big three Harden, who, I don't know what you know what kind of workout he was doing that he came in overweight Kyrie who was got some sort of mental thing going and Durant who can care less except for playing for a winner but he doesn't know how to build a winner and he just likes to hop around he really doesn't need contracts he, sh he should sign 10 day contracts throughout the season so he can go to different teams because he has no loyalty he's a bum he's always been a bum Kevin Durant JB underscore the program on Twitter because you're a bum. But what else do I have to say about the men? You know, one of the teams we missed, the Islanders, they're they're trying. They got the new arena, but it'll be a couple of years before they're good. I don't think I missed anybody, but New York sports is kind of horrible right now. Well, okay. That's a good transition. You... Uh, did, did I mention Kevin Durant's a bum? Yeah, well, you're, you're <laughs> I welcome. Think I, to I heard that. You're welcome to say it as many times as you want, but I knew that topic would uh, <laughs> get you right. In the eyes of Joshua Dorr, okay, and he would call it a ball buster. This is something that most New Yorkers have to deal with. They're ball busters because 100 years is a long time. But anyway, George, your thoughts about the situation that's going on in New York? Unbelievable, really, Scott. I never looked at it that way with totaling all the years of all the teams that have been frustrated by – uh, the championship drought. Uh, it, it's really an unreal situation. It really is. And what Joe was talking about, I mean, you had bad management, you had bad coaching, you had some very skeptical uh, fans that uh, are, are getting a little bit more uh, irate as every season marches on without a title. And it's really hard to believe because being the top city in America, the most populated city, and, and, and the one with the most money, usually, uh, obviously with Wall Street being right in their backyard. I mean, it's kind of uh, ironic that uh, of all cities in America, New York is the one that has had this drought going. 100 years, unbelievable. I mean, uh, you might want to throw Walter's comment up there too, Scott, but he talked about Detroit. Well, no, I'm not going to throw Detroit up there yet because oh, okay. I have nothing okay. planned. Okay. George, I, you know, if you, you, there comes a point where you're developing in the podcast era, okay, and if Joshua Dorr is listening or any of his other cronies, okay, okay, let's stay on the subject, okay? Okay. And if I have to go out there and tattoo that to your forehead <laughs> underneath the South Florida <laughs> Tribune cap, I will do that. Wow. Tattoo, uh -huh. stay on Woo! point, and take that head off. I know there's enough head around there, or we'll do it in two lines. Stay on the subject, <laughs> my darn. 
Okay, I got nothing else to say about yeah, New York City. GE may bring good things to life, but a tattoo sprayer won't be able. I don't know. Are you allowed to be buried with tattoos with your religion? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't think the Jewish people are, but that's not for another. That's another. <laughs> Walter, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, and that's okay, Walter. You're all right. It's different. I get to kick around Icorn. I've only been doing it for 44 years. What makes you think I'm going to stop now? You're okay. But now that, you, now that you guys let the cat out of the bag, okay, that's an awful lot of t teams for 100 years. So uh, does that well, mean that Aaron Boone's seat gets a little hotter? The more, and oh, it should be. The more desperate it is. But don't say anything more, Icorn. You've already brought your Detroit reference up. I'll do it. I'm, I'm suspending you for the next 10 seconds, okay? <laughs> uh, until I go ahead and make segue. Okay. But that said, I'm going to have Candy give us a station break while you think about what I'm gonna, uh, what I just told you. Go ahead, Candy. Wait, can I comment on the New yeah, York? Absolutely. You comment and then you give us a station break. But Icorn threw me off again. Sick them, man. <laughs> okay, so the New York market, biggest TV market, biggest revenue, pretty much biggest pockets. I mean, let's face it, the New York Mets this this season. $342 million is their payroll. 342. The next highest is 246. But does that mean money buys championships? Not always. Now, some will argue that like in Miami, the Marlins, they bought some championships back in the day. But New York is having a streak of not the best coaching, not the best playing, not the best players playing together. And maybe some of it is attitude. And maybe some of it is pressure. Because let's face it, in New York, you, you're expected to win. You're expected to win championships. So there's an added layer of pressure, an added layer with the media to do well. And some people don't perform well under pressure. Now I'll do my station identification break. Okay. This broadcast is brought to you by the South Florida Tribune Publishing Company, which actually published a book last year, Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. It is written by none other than Scott, the Motor City Mad Mouth, Morgan Roth. And the foreword was written by George Icorn. There is a picture of young Scott with young Muhammad Ali. There is also pl a plethora of stories that talk about Scott's involvement in the industry for over 40 plus years and how the industry has changed. Great read. It's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, Kindle, Google, and Apple. If you'd like to listen to podcasts, you can listen to our podcast wherever you get your podcast iHeartRadio, google um apple spotify deezer you name it go get it we have a website www.southfullertribune.com on our website on the front page there is a link so you can go get you know it's hot outside right now you need a t-shirt go get a south florida tribune t-shirt or if you're going traveling up to canada and you need you know cool off and you want a sweatshirt Go buy a sweatshirt, South Florida Tribune. It's on our website, the link. Click it. Go buy some merchandise. But you can go to our website and actually look at Scott's articles, George writes, JB writes, I take pictures. It's there. If you see a red subscribe button by George, that means you have not subscribed to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. I clearly do not understand why you haven't yet, but please do so. Then you'll be able to enjoy all of our shows and get notifications when our shows are on. Monday nights, we talk baseball. Tuesday nights, we talk football. Wednesdays and Thursdays, you never know what we're going to be talking about. We could be talking about a hot dog eating contest, cornhole, NBA, NHL, NBA, WNBA, you name it. And we might even do some non-sports topics. So check us out. Scott also does a show, the Motor City Mad Mouth Show on nofilter.net. Typically, it's on Wednesday nights before us, but this week it'll be tomorrow night around 8 p.m. Eastern, approximately. Scott, back to you. Thank you, man. Of course, on Twitter slash text, you can find us over at Tribune Sub. All right, let's go back to Walter up in Detroit. We are on some losing streak. Yeah, we are because Misery breed, does breed company. Let's talk about Chris Illich for a moment who took 
when he took control of the Tigers and the Red Wings. The Tigers are the second worst in MLB. You know, 457 and 665, the worst in NHL. Second worst, I should say. Or actually, second worst is the Tigers, and the worst in the NHL is the Red Wings at 206, 331. So when you think about the difference that you have right there, is things haven't been the same between Mike Illich and Chris Illich, and the Red Wings and the Tigers are up to some very difficult times. So with that said, Mr. Detroiter, you can talk now. You've had more than 10 seconds to think about what I told you. Let's talk about the Illiches and the rest of the problems. But before we do that, let's make sure we get the rest of the chat comments up there. Cursed, the Lions haven't won anything since 57. Yeah, hopefully they'll change, but they haven't. Last major pro championship here is in 2009 with the Red Wings. And don't forget that they were only go ahead and got to the playoffs 25 years in a row. I still think that does count for something anyway. The only difference in New York has an infinite advantages at its disposal. I'm not going to lie. I enjoy the failure of New York City sports. <laughs> uh, okay, well, it's uh, I'm sure a lot of people that, that you're entitled to your opinion. That's for sure. And let's see. Let's go to Meridai. All right. Top dollar spent on every team to succeed. There's no reason to not win. Well, except for coaching. George, I'm here if you need me. Yeah, of course, he's used, he doesn't want to see his buddy get ripped. Uh, All right, go ahead, George. Uh, now yeah. you talk about your Detroit. Well, you know, obviously Detroit, at least professional football-wise, has turned the corner. They won a championship. Yes, they haven't been to the Super Bowl, but uh, that day is coming. As far as the Red Wings go, I mean, yeah, you know, making the playoffs that many years in a row and, and all the Stanley Cups they won, but now they've been on hard times, as we know, eight straight years without even tasting the playoffs. Pistons, just a complete disaster. Oh, gosh. Uh, but when you talk about Chris Illich, there is something that does stand out. He doesn't seem to have the passion of his father. His father was a Detroit Tiger player at one time. Uh, Chris is a very astute businessman. He, he, I think he built up his legacy within that family more on the business side. And I, I'm not faulting him, but I just mean the passion that his father had and his mother to a certain degree with the Red Wings uh, is, to me is not present with, with young Chris Hillich. So that's all I wanted to add. But yeah, Detroit's been waiting a long time too. I get it, but it still can't, doesn't compare to the long wait of a hundred years for the New York teams. All right, Joe. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you think about Detroit, you think about the bad boys of the Pistons, you think about the Red Wings, which had a nice little dynasty for a while, the 84 Tigers, and they're finally starting to turn the corner and start to get some good young talent there in uh, in the baseball, the MLB, and the Tigers. Uh, the Red Wings, I, I don't know what's going on with them as much. I don't follow them as much, but I, I think in the next couple of years, they're going to start to to rebound. The Pistons, though, they just can't seem to figure it out. You right. know, they've had top picks and been horrible for the last few years. I don't know what it's going to take for that team to, to come back and, you know, become relevant again because, you know, it, it's a shame. It's a hardworking community. It's a hardworking city, and they just – they're just – there, you know, they're just they're not giving it the effort that they should, I think. Candy. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you guys what surprised me is I saw a stat that says for the Tigers, last year your revenue was three hundred and six million dollars for the Tigers. Your payroll this year is 118 million, which is only 38.6% of the revenue from last year. You, according to MLB, out of the 30 teams, that puts you 27th place percentage wise of the revenue you guys made last year, what you're spending on salary payroll this year. What I'm gonna, what I'm gonna say is. I'm going to blame a lot of it on your GMs because honestly, I don't think we give enough credit to the GMs that can put together really good teams. And part of it is the owner that, that pays for that GM. The success that green Bay has had, a lot of it is attributed to Ron Wolf. You know, if you look at it, the really good GMs really know how to pick on pick players and you've got to, some of the teams that don't have the payroll and the expense that a lot of other teams do, they've got to rely on 
hitting on all your draft picks. And so I think a lot, a lot of it is that a lot of it is also your coaching staff, getting your players to play together cohesively as a team, because these are all team sports, not individual sports. And I think that matters too, and makes a big difference. Well said. Well, Troy Weaver was awful. Monty Williams, unfortunately, lasted only one year. I think he could have gotten it done in year two or three with better players, but the reality of the situation is you don't finish 14 and 68 worse than you did when you only won 16 games. And Tom Gore is right now getting to the point where that honeymoon period is over. He knows he needs to put together a winner. So when you have that combination going against you, it doesn't work well. Al Avila had a 19 million year rebuilding program, traded every good player on the planet. And that's why they were behind. You know, the Red Wings, I give them a little, cut them a little bit more slack. Ken Holland did a good job with them. Steve Eiserman is just trying to clean up the mess. And the Lions under Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes, there's no question that they're making progress. So albeit they're having a little difficult time right now, I see the Red Wings getting in the playoffs next year. The Lions we can only hope that there's really not a major letdown coming into next year because you always hope that they don't read the clippings. But I don't think there will be. I think they're in much, much better shape now than they were. You know, the Red Wings were so close to getting in the playoffs. That's the whole thing. Right, but it wasn't right. for an overtime, one too many overtime wins and not a regular, over, regular w- regulation win. They would have been in the playoffs and that drought would have been gone. So, I do feel good about where they're headed, but again, like you guys have all reiterated, you know, when you don't have front offices and ownership on the same page and the owners aren't making the right moves, that's a recipe for disaster. That's for sure. Well, you know what? Now that we've gone out there and talked about the droughts, let's talk about something that's really good in women's sports. And I'm not talking about the WNBA. I'm talking about something a little bit better than that. Kudos to Marty, Marnie, M-A-R-N-E-Y, Gellner, who became the first woman to call play-by-play in Minnesota Twins team history, and she did it against the White Sox. Well, let's turn to the woman that we have here, Candy Epling, and let's give me your thoughts about Marnie Gellner. Uh, I don't know a lot about Marnie, but, I mean, you're hearing more and more how women are starting to do play-by-play and getting into the game. Uh, kudos, because, again... I mean, again, why are we talking about this? Like, why is it a thing? It should be a norm. The best person for the job should get it, whether it's a woman or a female. They both know the game. The game is the same. Growing up, if you play baseball, you would know it. As long as you know the history and can tell good stories, good for you. Like, if if, if she's great, I've never listened to her. I'll be honest. My favorite is is Bob Uecker without a doubt, but I'm partial and biased to, you know, my team. And, but do I ever think women will play in the MLB? I actually think so, Adam, because there is women now starting to play in men in college football. And that's a more contact sport. So I would think MLB would, could be easier and more accepting of women playing in MLB. There you go. Okay, go ahead, and George. Josh, door dog check. There you go. Got to give him a dog, dog check. One hundred and one. All right. Uh, well, any, uh, hey, listen. You know, uh, uh, we talked about it on one hundred eight stitches. I'm happy for her. I don't know much about her either, but it, it's it's one of those areas that it just taken a long, long time to kind of crack that barrier, if you will. The other one is. Major League Baseball, you know, and that's another thing is the umpiring. You know, we've had female officials, but for some reason, they've had them in spring training, but they never promoted a female to the staff. I think they should do that also. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of qualified lady announcers and and lady broadcasters and, you know, sportscasters. They do a great job with anchoring. They do a fantastic job as sideline reporters. Uh, They've been uh, going back to Phyllis George. They've been part of the uh, panel, if you will, on the pro football pregame shows and stuff. So um, I'm happy for for her in Minnesota. The Twins uh, seem to have made a nice move to do that. And um, I'm only hoping that it becomes more common instead of us having to talk about being 
a one-off, you know, and that she did something that, you know, nobody else did, at least in Minneapolis. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy for her, Scott, too. All right, Joe. I like this comment by Adam Bloomstead. You know, I would like to see a female head coach, a female umpire in the next two years. You know what, Adam? There was a thought thought I actually had. I thought Becky Hammond would break the barrier and become the first head coach in the NBA, but it didn't work out. She took the Las Vegas Aces. But you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if that happens in the next two, three, four, five years, Adam. Great point, though. All right, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of over this topic. It's 2024, you know. The best person for the job is the one that should get it. She's obviously the best person. The twins thought she was best and most qualified for the job. Right. Women could, you know, talk about sports just as good as men. Candy's one of the best that I've worked with. I have no problem saying that Candy's a woman, you know, so it's self explanatory. If, you know, it, it's great that we recognize it, but at the same time, it's not something we should even have to recognize. If you're the best for the position, that's what it should be. You know, I'm glad for the woman, uh, Marty, you know, I'm sure, you know, she should be proud that she got there. Uh, it's groundbreaking, but at the same time, we're at a point where it shouldn't be groundbreaking. So correct. Thanks. Yeah, I agree. And, I, and I'll tell you this too, Marty Gellner in Minnesota, she's something, I'll tell you what, she's well liked and well known there. So her credibility is unbelievable. <coughs> Excuse me. So with that said, okay. We're going to stay. This topic is designed for Candy Evelyn. Now, I'll tell you what. I noticed this here out there. I couldn't believe how many coaches that the Milwaukee Bucks em, em, employ when it comes to assistant coaches. If Doc Rivers isn't under pressure now, I don't know what the heck pressure is. So bear with me for a second, okay? Here's the coaching staff of the Milwaukee Bucks under Doc Rivers. Darvin Ham, never heard of him? Yeah, once upon a time he was there with the Lakers. Greg Buckner, Dave Jorger, he's previous head coach. Then you have Rex Kalmanian, Joe Prunty, Vin Baker. Now, I'll tell you what, if you're – Vin Baker was a heck of a player. I used to like watching him. Pete Dominguez. So that'll be a crowded bench. So those are all your assistant coaches. Now, if you want some other assistant coaches for – Assistant coaches, you got Jack Karen, the head of player development, Jason Love, player development, and then you have Spencer Rivers, player development. Oh, my goodness. How many coaches can you have, Joe? That's a lot. Yeah, I mean, more power to them if they want to have that many people uh, in the coaching staff. I don't think it's necessary. But if, you know, they feel that they're going to get the most having all those people – you know, on the bench or in the organization helping as long as they can effectively use all of them to make the team better. But it all starts with, you know, Doc Glenn Rivers, who has proven he's not a, not the best coach in the NBA, that he's not good in the playoffs when it counts. And, you know, he's going to be holding that team back. So, you know, maybe get rid of him and elevate one of the 35 million assistant coaches and they'll have a better shot. Hey, Joe, I was just amazed that they had that many coaches. I'm thinking, you know, yeah, that is a lot. That's, that's insane. Seven regular assistants, and then, or eight, I don't know who's counting at that point. You got seven plus three equals 10. Yeah, that does, that's a general math question, one that I can handle that doesn't require a calculator, but still, 10, that's a lot. I mean, and yeah. you know what? You, you go five. Remember, starting lineup was five, and then you have five deep. Is there, am I missing something? Never mind. Forget about it. All right, George Icorn. Well, I tell you what, that is a lot of coaches, and uh, that it, it just exploded, you know. And not only in the NBA, but also Major League Baseball. I noticed so many coaches in, on these rosters, on these clubs. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can have as many coaches as you want, but if you still can't win or you still can't get to the promised land, then something's wrong. I mean, you're, we saw them. They, you know, they swept Phoenix in the first round. The Bucks did, and then they struggled mightily. They almost lost the Denver series. Uh, they came back with two wins at the at the tail end of that series, and then they made it to the conference finals. And we all remember what happened against Dallas: uh, one win, four losses. So I agree with you. I was cutting him a little bit more slack probably than I should have when we talked about Rivers uh, after he was hired by Milwaukee, because I remember we talked about him at great length on one of the shows. But uh, uh, no, I'm with you guys now on that. I mean, he's not seems to be the right person at all to get a team 
far, far deep into the playoffs and into the into the championship round, if you will, the finals. So yeah, a lot of coaches, and obviously you got to have more than just coaches. You got to have talent and leadership on that floor, and that's where I think Milwaukee has to fine tune and get a little bit better in those departments. Okay, let's go to the chat room here, Walter Mitchell, Candy. This is just one for JB. Okay, Walter Mitchell. The problem is some of us still have Neanderthal feelings. Remember that lady that just the assistant coach of the crack and people hated it, not even looking at her resume. I mean, okay, you want, you have an answer to that? It, it's a shame. It's like that. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it's, and it's not just with females and sports. It's with race. It's with religion. It's 2024. We're all people. I guarantee you, if any one of us gets cut, it's red. We all breathe oxygen. You know, we all we're all very much more similar than we are different, and we have to start just getting over all of that, and then we'll be okay. Okay, fair enough. All right, Candy. Since it's your team, the Milwaukee Bucks, what's your answer to all these coaches? It doesn't matter how many coaches you have; the coaches don't play the, the game. It depends on who, you, what team you field on that court, the talent you have the talent that plays together, and I'll be honest with you, how injury-prone are those players? Because that's really what's been biting the bucks lately. Um, as far as coaches go, the annual salaries for NBA coaches, they get as high as 387 and as low as 15000 On a night, on the bench can only be head coach and a maximum of three assistants, whether they're coaches or or trainers or anything like that. So having all those coaches fine, but it's really about the talent that you put on the field and how well, and I've said this for a long time that I've thought a lot of the Milwaukee teams have gotten a lot of injuries. And so I think the training staff has to do a better job of keeping them out on the field. Um, I just read that, Chris Middleton had surgery on both of his ankles during the off season. Now he's supposed to be ready for the start of the next season, but he's only played in an average of 86 games this last year. And it used to be higher than that. Um, they traded away the bucks again. I will say and say this till I'm blue in the face. They traded away drew holiday and he was the defensive guru on that team, on that championship team, that really helped gel them together and play defense. And the Bucks really lacked that defense last year. And there's an old saying that says defense wins championships. Well, all I can tell you is this. Doc Rivers doesn't survive. You have a couple of potential replacements on the bench in Darvin Ham, and you have one of Dave Jorger. Now, a little defensive note that I just found out today is that Patrick Beverly has decided instead of playing for Houston – and Detroit for the league minimum or whatever they can get him, he's going to play in Israel. So enjoy the matzah, enjoy all the chopped liver, and enjoy the amenities out in Israel. It's okay, Patrick Beverly. You might even be able to gain a lot more subscribers for your podcast is what you can do out there, although they're going to have to figure out how to do it in Israel, and I wouldn't even begin to advise you because I, I struggle to speak the languages that I do. I've never even passed a foreign language, but still. But as far as the Bucs are concerned, the biggest thing that they have to have come postseason, Giannis Antetokounmpo must finally stay healthy in the postseason, period. One minute, one year he's missing in this amount of games, this year he's missing. Come on, Giannis, stay on the court, okay? We can't sit here looking to put people around you when you're not playing during the playoffs. You know, they need you during the regular season. The numbers have always been good. You got your championship, so you don't have to worry about anybody putting in the classifications of all the players that don't have one. But they need you in the postseason. They do. And until Giannis and it's a couple can stay healthy in the postseason, fine. Now, Doc Rivers, you don't have any more excuses to not win. You got enough help. I mean, my goodness, if you may not have that many people on the bench during the game, you have enough people in the gym to make sure everybody can shoot free throws or whatever you got these guys brought in for. So as if Doc Rivers' seat wasn't hot, I'd say it's bo boiling hot right now. And because the Milwaukee Bucks are showing a lot of faith that you can hire all the assistants you want, you better win. And that's all there is to it. Now, we uh, just started a new segment, which 
I'm really having a lot of fun with. It's called our non-sports related subject. Nobody sees this here, so nobody knows, okay? But I have one that Candy Ebling is definitely going to get be familiar with, but I'm going to bring her on last, okay? I'm going to start off with Joe Ellis, okay? A Florida man faces a felony robbery charge after attempts to withdraw one cent. I said one cent, folks, okay, from a bank in Sumter County. His name is Michael Fleming. What do you think of that, Joe? One cent. You got a penny in your pocket? Really? So he tried to withdraw a penny, and he's got felony what charges? Yeah, he's got a felony charge. They're trying to charge him for a felony charge just for with. I don't know if there's some stupid publicity stunt or whether this is real, but it was real enough to get it on the sports exchange tonight. What do you think? A felony what, for a penny? Holy What moly. is wrong with Florida? Well, seriously, what is wrong with, with the state of Florida? That's all I can say. I don't have that much of time to tell you. They've already spent more than what the whole penny was worth once they arrested him. Yeah. And now we haven't even got into the court cost, the lawyer cost. And if they incarcerate the men, that's tax money for the one cent. I'm done. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, you just got started because you probably gave the answer that 99.9% .9 of this civilized world would come up with. But you know what we always try to do, Joe, as we always talk about in the book? We got to come up with something different, and it's our job to report the news whether we like it or we don't, right, oh, Joe? Oh, yeah. Isn't that journalism 101? That's of course. Not, okay. All right, George, you know what? What are your thoughts about the penny felony? The penny felony stinks to high heaven. I'm sorry. This There's no place for that kind of, you know, I mean, I I, I could see if somebody's trying to have some fun and getting the, you know, get drawing the ire of the bank employees or something like that. Now, I don't know if he had something planned like that as to try to get his name in the news, uh, although uh, that's a better way to get your name in the news, I guess, than obviously some other violent criminals so with the way of what things they do. But that's for another day. But no, I don't understand it. I, I, I just, you know, it's it's so funny, but it's ridiculous. But and yet it just is a is the craziest thing, Scott and guys and, and Candy. This is just this sounds so stupid. Like you said, GB, wasting all the time and energy on it now. You're far, far in the negative category, it's what it's costing the uh, powers that be. Crazy. Well, if anybody was on Inside the Picture last night, you know, I never thought I'd see the day where I'd be talking about Flip Wilson and Nipsey Russell. But when Jeremy Bulrick is out there telling me that he can't come on our show on Thursday because he's got a date, and then everybody, it, it, all of the co-hosts here are having a lot of fun. We hope it works out well for you, Jeremy Balrick and all. We're having a blast with this guy. You know, we wish we love Jeremy. Don't get me wrong. If you want to take the night off for a date, we hope it works out. And you know what? The one thing I've always learned, you know, you got to be crazy. You got to be different. And we need to maintain a sense of humor. And that one cent pen, penny to me, felony, is interesting. But we'll go to somebody that's a bit more familiar with the banking industry, Candy. So he walks in, fills out a withdrawal slip for a penny, walks up to the teller. Teller says he can't withdraw the penny. He says, so you want me to say the other word? Fleming told the bank teller, according to the arrest report. No other details are out there except that deputies said the bank teller was in fear of possible violence. So he might have acted very aggressively that you guys don't know. And um, so the they actually said when the deputies were there um, that they felt there was probable cause to feel that he was violating Florida's robbery laws. And so that's why he was, he actually was arrested. He was a 41 year old man. He remains on $5,000 bond as of a couple days ago. There are so many crazy people in this world. And yes, you guys don't have, and I shouldn't say don't have a clue, but the reality is who in their right mind is going to walk into a bank and give a withdrawal slip for a penny. Like you can't do anything with a penny. You're doing that to be um, rude, joking, if you're trying to joke, but it really isn't funny. And 
-hmm. as somebody that works inside a bank, I can see where now I wouldn't necessarily have taken it to this level, but obviously maybe he was aggressive and maybe he was talking aggressively and his body language. There are so many crazy people in this world that you have to be careful because the slightest wrong thing that you say, you don't know if he didn't have a gun in, in his, with him. You don't know what, what he might go do. Like if you say the wrong thing, he might walk out, go get a gun and come back. Like there are so many different things that set people off and vice versa. So do I think walking into a bank for a penny is something that should be a felony? No. But what else transposed that could very well, she could, whoever the bank teller was could, could have been trying to protect her and others because you don't know who else was around as well. Because if he was getting violent and getting, you know, abusive, who knows what he could have done. Well, we don't have the footage on it, but you know what? Anytime I see interesting stuff like there, you know, that's why we have a comment section. That's why we have emails. And that's why when we come up with stuff like this, it's off the wall. And, you know, I wish we had more opportunities to do more newsworthy stuff. The problem I don't like about doing a lot of newsworthy stuff is the reason why I tune local news off is I'm sick and tired of seeing who was killed here and all that business. So if I could go out there and find anything out of journalism that's a little bit different and try to bring it to the forefront, that's the reason why I incorporate these different topics. But I don't watch local news. I haven't in a long time. And you know what? Again, we have our sources to get information. And as Marshall McLuhan would say, and I mentioned it in the book, the medium is a message. And every now and then I'm using the medium as a message to talk about an off the wall news story so we can get comments from other people that might have different opinions. But at least on this one, we knew Candy had a little bit more information or insight on it than we did. So with that said, we do have time for parting shots. Candy, do you have any parting shots? Do I have, um, give me a minute, come back, to, circle back. All right, to George, me. you have a parting shot? Yeah, hats off to uh, Joe Davis and John Smoltz and the team at uh, Fox Sports. So the very well put together uh, all-star broadcast last night. Very, very exciting. And also, I got a hand, hats off, too, to the Texas Rangers. My goodness, I don't think I've ever was going to see a day outside of protecting the outfield uh, 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 from having a riot to if you win a championship with horseback. But those horses coming on the field for the American League flag, the National League flag, that was so cool. And the, and the different Cowboys uh, doing their rope tricks. So hats off. Texas, you did a great job down there. Great, great all-star game. So, J JB, you have any parting shots? So, in a few weeks, we're going to be going and having the 2024 Olympics. The mayor of Paris took a swim in the river, which they claim is cleaned up. They've been working on cleaning it for uh, many years at this point, but recent tests show it's actually not safe to swim in the river but the mayor has decided that he was going to go ahead and swim in the river to show everybody that it was you know safe um you know the olympic committee needs to step in make sure that the river is safe to swim in not put athletes health at risk for an opportunity that you know these athletes will do whatever it takes to compete so it's your job as the Olympic Committee to protect the athletes that would do anything to compete in your, your events and find a safe location. And, you know, to me, that's just something that needs to be done as soon as possible, have an alternative to it, because you can't have athletes travel, you know, and they're they're not going to sit out if, if, if they, you know, if it's whitewashed and said, oh, it's it's safe but it's really not safe. They're not going to sit out. They're not going to have their own test. They're not going to look at the water and say, I don't like the way it looks. I'm going to sit out of this. They're going to compete because they all want to win. And, you know, you got to got to protect them in this situation. So this needs to be done relatively soon and find, find an alternative location. Okay. Well done. Candy, you have a parting shot? My parting shot. And this is not political, 
but there is no room for violence at any political event. I don't care who was there, who, what, what you believe in, the attempt at the assassination is uncalled for. And I'm sorry. I know we don't talk politics, but there is no room for violence at any of these. Everyone has a right to speak freedom of speech. You have a right to your opinion. You have a right to be at an event supporting who you want to support. And it is just so sad that innocent lives were lost because someone decided to take a shot. All set. The only two comments I want to have tonight are, number one, I want to thank Fred Claire for being my guest on the Motor City Man Mouse show. Folks, this is as old time of a baseball conversation as you can get with a guy who won a World Series with the Dodgers and has been a part of baseball for ages and ages. And we talked about Al Campanis and that Nightline interview, as well as some important issues about, you know, minorities in the sport and all that. So if you get a chance on the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel, please watch that interview. It's a good one. The only other comment I have, Mr. Ellis, is I hope you have a good time out in Alaska. I've been there. Didn't take the cruise, okay? But Alaska is a great place. One of these days I'll take it, Candy, on the Alaskan cruise. I hope you and Debbie have a wonderful time out in Alaska. I know you're going to have a wonderful time. It's a, one of the greatest states I've been in. So go out there, Thank and you. we look forward to seeing you in two weeks from now. Thank you. I appreciate it. So meanwhile, with that said, that um, concludes this edition of the Sports Exchange. But, Katie, you want to take over? No, I was just going to say, we won't be on in two weeks. We'll be on next week, but the week after, we will be traveling back ourselves. Right, okay. Well, so we, we will be on next week, okay, but two weeks we will be off. All right, make sure we get our travel schedules straight. With that said, Joe Ellis, let everybody know how they get a hold of you. JB underscore the program on X, sidelinesportsnet.com, sidelinesportsnet.com, the best website out there that Candy has put together for us. It looks phenomenal. You got articles, you got pictures, you got everything that's important to you all in one spot. You got articles from Scott, George, myself, and plenty of other people, some pictures from Candy, and some phenomenal stuff on there. Okay, George, you're next. Yeah, you can reach me at gicorn at yahoo.com. You can read me on the Motor City Tribune, which is uh, at the South Florida Tribune website. And also I've got a book. Yeah, thank you, Candy. Detroit Sports Broadcasters on the Air, featuring our own Scott Morganroth, along with our dear friend Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Al Kaline, so many other Tiger broadcasters and baseball, all sports. So there's a link to uh, that at the uh, near the end of my column on Motor City Tribune, and you can reach me on X at San G Sports 99 as well as see me on 108 Stitches and the Sports Exchange. Two wonderful programs here. JB, you and your beloved have a great time in Alaska. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Candy, take us home. And hello, Ralph Williams. Hi, Ralph. Hello, Ralph. So, South Florida Tribune Publishing Company published a book last November, Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning in the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. It is written by Scott Motor City Mad Mouth Morgan Roth. And the foreword was written by none other than George Icorn. Go get the book. George's book and Scott's book, both available on Amazon. Get your copy today. It's Amazon Prime Day. Come on. What are you waiting for? It talks about Scott's 40 plus years in the business and how media has changed over those 40 plus years. Go to our website, www.southfordatribune.com. Read all the articles we have. We get um, transcripts from the Dolphins, the Jaguars, the Lions. We get a lot of local South Florida colleges. We get Hurricanes, Gators, um, FAU Owls, USF Bulls, all kinds of sports-related stuff. Go there, especially now we have some articles I can tell you about some of the athletes that are competing over in the Olympics that were based out of Florida and that went to school at some of the schools down here. So go go get to the website, check it out. Go buy some merchandise on our merchandise store. You know, you need a hoodie, you need a hat, you need, you need, come on, you need some kind of if you'd like to listen to our podcast, you can get it wherever you get your podcast. iHeartRadio, Google, Apple, Spotify, Deezer, CastBox, 
If you haven't subscribed to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel, please do so and get notifications when our fabulous programming comes on. Monday nights, it's 108 Stitches Baseball Talk. Tuesday nights, it's Inside the Pigskin. Wednesday nights, it's Sports Exchange. Thursday nights, it's typically Fire Up. Tomorrow night, we will not be doing Fire Up. Scott will be doing his Motor City Mad Mouth show on nofilter.net tomorrow night. Let's see. And you have a guest, but the, I'll let you talk about that. Well, that'll be a TBD, okay? okay. TBD. Now, but I should also point out on Mondays, now we have a show that we got going again called Fire Up Florida, which will be a hockey show that we're looking to turn. We'll talk about the Florida Panthers and the Tampa Bay Lightning. I co-host Rod Peterson, and I'll be running that. And it'll be, we'll be bringing in alternate voices to contribute when they want to as well. It's going to be a great show, primarily the Panthers and the – and the Tampa Bay Lightning, but I'm going to also make sure we do talk a lot of a lot about big hockey news as well. Why not? I mean, I, I like to have hockey every once in a while on the Sports Exchange, but the majority of the hockey content will be spilled over there, like we do with baseball and football as well. And on and just so you know, on Twitter at Tribune South is how you can follow us there. So, and Tuesday nights, if you like to listen to more women talking about sports i'm on chicks and salsa tuesday nights at 7 30 come on over and listen to us you never know what, we, what sport we're going to be talking about or what we're featuring last <coughs> this last week megan and i talked a lot of wnba we talked a little bit about the all-star game the wnba has their all-star game this weekend uh they have friday is their um Shoot around the, I'm trying to think, Saturday is the actual game, I believe. But, yes, go check out Chicks and Salsa as well. All right. Well, that does it for this edition of the Sports Exchange. On behalf of Candy Evelyn, George Icorn, J.B. Ellis, my name is Scott Morgan. Thank you you for joining us. We will be back on the Sports Exchange next week. And I'll have a... I'll have another guest on. I'll inform people of that later on once it is officially confirmed. And then JB Ellis will have his regular seat when he gets back from Alaska. So once again, JB, you and Deb have a great time. Enjoy. And, thank you. And thank you everybody much for joining us. We appreciate all the activity in the chat room. Walter Mitchell, you were our you were our number one star of the night. Thank you very much, Walter, for contributing. Good night, everybody. See you next week. Good night.